The bill will criminalise marital rape without exception. Currently, marital immunity for rape is only removed in certain circumstances where there has been a breakdown in the marriage. Sexual relations in a marriage, and indeed in any relationship, should be based on mutual consent. Sexual assault is violence, and violence in any context is wrong. This is the basis on which we have repealed marital immunity. Clauses 110 and 112 of the bill deal with this. There have been concerns raised that the complete repeal of the marital immunity for rape could lead to an abuse of the legal process due to an increase in unmeritorious allegations of rape by vindictive spouses. I want to assure the House that all allegations of rape will be held to the same high standard of evidential rigour. There is a separate proposal which goes some way to deal with this concern. We have doubled the maximum punishment for Section 182 of the Penal Code, situations where persons give false information to a public servant, from one to two years imprisonment. In other words, persons who knowingly make false reports will be dealt with firmly by the law. Clause 54 gives effect to this. The bill will decriminalise attempted suicide. This proposal received wide public support, including from organisations which work directly with persons who attempt suicides, such as Samaritans of Singapore. The criminal justice system is not the best way to deal with persons who are so distressed that they choose to end their own lives. In fact, the threat of prosecution and the labelling of persons who attempt suicide as offenders may worsen their emotional state and the stigma they face. This view was shared by the PCRC and many others during the public consultation process. There were some concerns that the decriminalisation of attempted suicide would reduce the deterrent effect and cause an increased number of suicides. However, bear in mind that persons who attempt suicide are typically so distressed that the, that the deterrent effect of criminalisation is very low. The present situation is that hardly anyone is prosecuted and punished for this offence in the first place. There were also concerns that the decriminalisation of attempted suicide will send a signal that the government has shifted its position on the sanctity of life. I assure you that this is not the case. Every effort will still be made to prevent suicides. The bill amends other laws to ensure that the police will still be able to intervene in suicide situations. Members of the public will still be able to call for emergency assistance in cases where a person is attempting suicide. The offence of abetment of attempted suicide will be retained. This will include physician-assisted suicides. Under this bill, the maximum imprisonment term for abetment of attempted suicide will be enhanced significantly from one year to ten years, where the abetment of attempted suicide is of a minor or a person who lacks mental capacity, higher punishments or higher maximum punishments will apply, 15 years imprisonment. If hurt is caused to the minor or person who lacks mental capacity in the course of the abetment, the maximum punishment is imprisonment for life or the imprisonment for a term which may extend to 20 years. Clauses 84, 85, 89, 180 and 183 give effect to this.